Hi students, welcome to exercise 33, Rational Functions and its Transformations. Alright, so this is a graph you would have seen in grade 11 pre-cal. We call this a rational function because we have an x on the denominator. Alright, when we sketch this graph, um, notice that when x equals 0, this is a non-permissible value. So just a, so a non-permissible value, this would be x equals 0, or x cannot equal 0 maybe. Okay, so what happens here, when, since x cannot equal to 0, what we're going to get is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Okay, so let's try to plug in a few points just to try to get a little bit more accustomed to this graph. So if I had this x and y, if I plugged in x equals negative uh, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, well, I already know that at y, when x equals 0, y cannot any, be anything, right, because you cannot divide by 0. Okay, so the other points would be negative 1 half, uh, negative 1, you'd have 1, 1 half, oops, it's 2. Okay, so the points we'd have on our graph, uh, at x equals 1, you'd have 1, uh, 2, you'd have a half. Again, I'm just plugging in values into my graph here. Okay, so at here we'd have negative 1, negative half, negative 2, neg sorry, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative a half. Okay, so what happens here, um, what's the behavior of our graph when x becomes extremely large? So ma imagine x is a thousand. If x was a thousand, one divided by a thousand is very, very small. So what happens here, we have an asymptote on the axis here because this fraction will never be equal to zero. And therefore, our graph will basically simply look like this. You're going to go towards the asymptotes. Sorry, I missed that point. Okay, we're going to go towards the asymptote as x becomes very large. And when x becomes very close to zero, you're going to have a very large number. One divided by 0 0.001, that becomes 100. So, or 1,000, I think. So it would get really, really close to the asymptote approaching. So this is our base graph. We call this the parent graph, just like the log parent graph, things like that. So this is our base graph. This is what a rational graph looks like. All right, note, when x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote. Discuss that already. That's when you divide by 0. When x becomes very large, okay, y is going to get really close to 0. When x becomes very large negative, so same idea, it gets very close to 0. All right, so we call y equals 0 a horizontal asymptote because of this behavior here. When x becomes very large, y approaches 0. Okay, so sketch the graph. Y equals to 3 f of x plus 2 minus 1. Okay, well, this is simply the graph uh, transformed, right? So the first transformation, let's start with these two points here. Let's not forget about our, our shape, right? Our shape is like this and like that. So this 3 multiplies all the y values by 3. So our first points would be over here because you multiplied by 3. And then you moved over 2 left and down 1. Okay? So 2 left, down 1, you would have this point here. And 2 left, down 1, you would have this point here. So notice that the horizontal asymptotes would change as well. So your, uh, your, hor your horizontal asymptote would go down 1. So your horizontal asymptote is now at negative 1. And your vertical asymptote would have shifted over 2. So your vertical asymptote would have been here. And this would be our graph. Okay, so it would be about a version like this and like that. Okay, so the equation in this graph, if you write an equation, you would have y equals to 3, x plus 2, minus 1. So again, if I just look at my original graph, this is 1 over x. So this is the sh times y by 3, shift over 2 to the left, and down 1. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to answer over here. <laughs> Alright, so the general equation of a rational function is y equals to a, x minus h plus k. So again, this is your stretch, this is your horizontal shift, and this is your vertical shift. Okay, so sketch the graph, y equals to negative 2, x minus 1 plus 3. So again, all you got to do is kind of go back to your base graph. So you imagine the 1 over x function, right, which will have the point at 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, and this is our shape, right? So um, this is a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical reflection, right? So the first part, that negative would flip it over here, 
and here, right? So this one would go up here, this one would go down here. Okay, so then now we have a stretch of two. So you multiply the values by two. So you times two times two. Okay. So notice our vertical um, our vertical asymptote and our horizontal asymptote haven't moved because when we flipped, it's still there. And when we doubled, well, this is still zero and zero. Okay. So now we have a shift of one to the right and three up. Okay, so I'm going to put in my final graph here, put in green. So take this point, shift one right, three up. So we have this point over here. And we do the same thing with the other point, uh, one right and three up. We're at one here. Okay, now the horizontal asymptote has moved. The horizontal asymptote actually will always be this, co this constant here because you moved it up three. So your horizontal asymptote is at three now. And your vertical asymptote, well, that will always correspond to your, div your division of 0. So we cannot divide by 0, right? So if x equals 1, you're dividing by 0. So that's where your asymptote is. Oops. And there's your points. And then we already have a point set up, so we can sketch our graph. Again, the shape stays the same. Okay, notice that now because of this negative, instead of being in these two corners, you're in these two corners. That's what that negative has done to us. Okay, so the negative value of A is a reflection over the x-axis. Notice you could probably do it the other way around, but that's fine. Okay. All right, so what if we give it in this form, y equals to 3x minus 4 divided by x minus 2? All right, so one way we can do this is we can complete the division to put it in a form like this. So basically do the synthetic division, get this form, and then sketch it from that spot. All right, so let's start with the synthetic division. So what I was going to do is I would put um, my zero for in the denominator, right? So you put your two here, and you would have the, co the coefficients of the numerator. So you'd have three minus four, okay? So the first step, you bring down your three. So this would be three, and then two times three is 6, and then you do minus 4, 6, which is 2. All right, so this is your remainder, right? And this is uh, the value that's been divided, right? So your new equation would be y equals to 3 plus 2 over the divider, which is x minus 2. Or you could rewrite it in the way that you usually write these equations, as presented here, 2 over x minus 2 plus 3. All right? So now you're basically sketching the exact same graph. Whoops, sorry about that. You're sketching the exact same graph. Uh, it's just different form, right? Instead of writing in this form, you're writing in this form. So let's sketch this graph. Um, over here we have a horizontal asymptote at x equals 2 because you're dividing by 2 here. <clears throat> so vertical asymptote, sorry. So at x equals 2, you have your vertical asymptote. You're your plus 3, that's your horizontal asymptote. Okay? And then, if you want, you could probably just find a point on each side. So take a point from each side of your asymptote and sketch. So basically make a small table of values here. I'm going to choose x equals 3 and x equals 1, one for each side of my, um, of my asymptote. So if I plug in 1 into this formula, you have 2 divided by negative 1, so negative 2, negative 2 plus 3, which is 1. Now, if you plug in 3, you have 2 over 1, which is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, so you've gotten two points, that's the minimum I ask for these graphs. So you have the point 1, 1, and you have the point 3, 5. Notice that these two points will always be the exact same distance from this vertex here where the two asymptotes cross. So notice that this is one right, two up. So you'll always do the opposite on this side. One left, two down. Okay, so one right, two up, one left, two down. And the general shape of your graph is like this. If you want to find more points, feel free to do so. You could just extend this table of values a little bit. But this is the minimum amount of points that I ask. 
All right, we're going to do one more example, very similar to the last, except I'm going to attack it in a different way. So instead of doing the, long, uh, the synthetic division, I'm going to find a couple tricks to, to actually sketch this graph. So there's another quick way to find the horizontal asymptote. So instead of dividing, what you can do is you can simply divide the leading coefficients. So the leading coefficients, that's for the largest degree. Okay, so that's the coefficient of the largest degree. When I say degree, it means, um, oops, let me say knee. Okay, when I say degree, it means the x is the largest power in the numerator, x is the largest power in the denominator. So all you got to do is divide the two coefficients here. So here, if you have two divided by one, so the horizontal asymptote in this case would be y equals to two because we have two over one. Okay, so another big note, and this is important. Okay, um, this is only true when the degree of the numerator and denominator is the same. So for example, this is a degree one because we have x to the power of one. This is a degree one because we have an x to the power of one. They have the same degree. Therefore, you can divide those coefficients. If I had an x squared there in one of those two, this would not be the case. All right, so we have y equals two as our horizontal asymptote. Our vertical asymptote is very easy to find. It's whenever the denominator is equal to zero. And in our case, that's x equals negative three. So at x equals negative three, I have my vertical asymptote. Okay, that should be a dotted line, sorry. Raise a few points here. And y equals two is our vertical or horizontal asymptote. So okay, again, that's simply found by dividing the, the coefficients of the largest powers. And here's our two lines. From here, as we just said, simply find a couple more points to sketch the graph. So very similar to what I just did in the last one. So again, I'm going to find a point on either side of the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to choose negative 4 and negative 2. So x equals negative 4, negative 2. Okay. And then I, all I got to do is plug them into this formula. So if I plug in negative 4 for x, I get negative 8 plus 5, which is negative 3, negative 3 divided by negative 1, which is 3. Okay, so I'm going to plot this point. So negative 4 and 3, which is over here. Okay, so this graph is going to do this. And if you remember correctly, and I'm going to check this with some math, but I said that the graph will always have the exact same uh, point on the opposite side here. So if I go negative 1, so left 1, up 1, I should go right 1, down 1. So the point I should find is negative 2, 1. Let's confirm that. So if I plug in negative 2 into here, that gives us negative 4 plus 5, which is 1. 1 divided by negative 2 plus 1, which is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Again, just confirming what I said earlier. And then you have your graph like that. All right, guys, so... Um, last thing I want to do is find the x and y intercept. Okay, so that's fairly easy. So the y intercept is when x equals to zero. So all I got to do is plug in zero into my formula. So that's two times zero. So I'm going to go back to the graph here, plus five. So plus five divided by zero plus three. Well, so if you look at it, that's simply five over three. Okay, and if you look at your graph, 5 over 3, that would be about here. That's perfect. That matches our graph. And now, the, the, uh, that, so that's the y-intercept. So now the x-intercept, y equals 0. You're going to have 0 equals to 2x plus 5 over x plus 3. Notice that to solve for x, I'm going to simply multiply by x plus 3 on both sides. And when you multiply it by 0, all you have left is 0 equals to 2x plus 5. So subtract 5, divide by 2, equals x. Again, negative 2.5, that matches our graph pretty well. All right, guys, hope this lesson made sense, and uh, I'll see you in class.